Hello and welcome back to NorCal 715. Today I have a Yamaha HTR 5840 and the problem the customer is telling me is that it has no subwoofer output. So there's the normal right left audio output. Here's the subwoofer output. All I'm getting is a hum and it sounds like some digital data of some type. So the first thing I noticed, if I take my ohm meter and I short the leads, I get well, 0.3 ohms, pretty much zero ohms. But if I go from any other connector, to the subwoofer ground, I get like six and a half, seven thousand ohms. That's not right. And you can actually hear it. Let me turn the volume up. When I put the ohm meter on here, you can hear it pop. As the fluke changes auto ranging scales. Six thousand five hundred seven thousand ohms. I remove it, put it back on. You hear a pop as the auto ranges. So that tells me something's going on with the ground on this. So I do have a schematic on this unit, and there's a subwoofer pre-output. And if you follow this down, you can see it goes to subwoofer two, subwoofer earth, and then this is the subwoofer output right here, SW, SW earth. So is it a simple fact that the connector is broken off of the board? That's a lot of teardown just to find out, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tear the back off this unit, take the circuit boards out, and inspect the subwoofer ground. Here's a board view of the subwoofer output, and then here's a block diagram of the subwoofer output right here. IC304 is the subwoofer amplifier, goes through a couple of mute transistors, and then out to the subwoofer output. So why am I getting all this noise? Is it just a lack of ground? Let's find out. So I certainly wish I had a better view to show you, but I don't. But it's going to be a matter of just taking all the screws off the back panel and completely removing this back panel. So there it is, the back panel is completely removed from the unit. So now we'll take off this little uh, shielding paper. Now this board should just unplug from all the boards. Some of these we can just take out and completely remove. The tuner, the component video inputs. We'll just set those aside for now. There's the S video, separated video, not super VHS, stands for separated video. Let's fold that back over there. There it is. And the solder connections look absolutely fine. Let's do some ohm tests and find out. So I've got my meter back on ohms. It's in the 600 ohm range, so it will not auto range. And so I'm gonna go from the earth connector right here Let's go to the earth of the subwoofer connector. I'm going to get 0.4 ohms. And there's subwoofer earth right there. 0.3 ohms. Why are we having such a problem? So we'll look at the jumper board here. Look at that. I see a problem. Look at that right there. It's been heated up. It burned off the coating that's on the pads. And look at that trace. It's loose on the board. So let's look and see if we have ohms between the subwoofer earth connector right here. No, it's actually still good right there. 0.3 ohms. But something has heated up this trace so much that it burnt off the conformal coating on the circuit board right here. So next we'll go ahead and pull this main board out of the unit and take a look at it and find out what might be going on. So the subwoofer plugs into this connector right here. So we're gonna to have to pull this whole board out of the unit. So now to do that, I've got a couple extra screws I gotta remove over here. Just unplug those, get them out of the way. Unplug this connector right here by lifting up on these tabs. Then the pins will just pull straight out. Unplug this connector, another ribbon cable. Another five pin connector right here. 
and the board is free. Ooh, look at that. Okay, so here is the connector that the subwoofer board actually plugs into. If you look at the fourth pin up right here, one, two, three, four, follow this trace down, goes through a jumper, there's the other side of the jumper, and then look at this. It's actually missing this whole trace right there has been burned off the board as well as right here completely burned away there's no trace left at all it's burned off the conformal coating off the circuit board now it's good up to here because this is a good solid ground land but all of this has been completely burned away from the circuit board so that's one of the problems so I'd say this customer has a problem with the subwoofer. Now he might have a ground loop going on. Hard to believe because most of these items are completely isolated and some of them are double insulated. But you see where the trace is thicker right here? It didn't burn. But where it's thin, right here, it burned completely off the board. So next, we need to try to find the preamp for this guy. So I need to pull some more schematics. So here's a schematic of the function board. And that's this board I took out that has the burn traces. And so I'm interested right now in the subwoofer output and subwoofer earth. We know subwoofer earth is compromised. But is the subwoofer output lead right here so it comes over to here through a mute two mute transistors they're both NPN transistors they're both 2SD 1938s so when the base goes high on this it just basically pulls this down to earth to mute the subwoofer so I'm interested in R400, R399, and R347 because the chances of this output IC, this NJM2068, being damaged are pretty slim if all of these are good. Now if I took a high voltage source, it would probably burn up this 470 ohm resistor times two, R400 and R399, it might damage this little 10 at 16 microfarad capacitor C340 and it could possibly damage this R347 100 ohm resistor. So if I find that these resistors are compromised, then there's an extremely good chance this op amp IC304 has been damaged as well. So let's find R347, R399, and R400 and test those out of circuit as well as doing some simple ohmmeter tests on these two mute transistors just to see if they test okay. So that's Q311 and Q312. Let's see if we can find those on the board. So this is the op amp right here, IC304. So out of pin 1 it goes through R347. So right here is R347. Now that should be a 100 ohm resistor. I'm going to short my leads it's hard to see, but I'm on the 600 ohm range. It's 100.7 ohms, so I'm very happy with that. Let's try to find R399 now. So it couples through this capacitor. So there's a great chance that is R399, and it should be a 470. four seventy two there's R four hundred right there four hundred and sixty nine ohms I'm very happy with that let's go to the diode scale we'll check these two mute transistors Q312 and Q311 good Let's reverse the leads to reverse bias these transistors. 
Good. Good. Let's just check collector to emitter, just to make sure. Good. Good. Reverse the leads. Make sure there's no diodes. Good. And good. So it looks like if we just run the jumpers from here to here and here to here, we might be back in business. And I think I'm going to go ahead and run a jumper across this as well because it's been compromised. It's been heated. So I'm pretty happy that these resistors checked fine. This one checked okay. And I'll go ahead and ESR that capacitor. I should see it's a 10 microfarad capacitor. So I should see probably between 3 and 10 ohms. I'd be happy with that. So I've got it zoomed in extremely close. Let's turn the ESR meter on. Short the leads. Zero the scale. So as you can see, it's labeled C340 right here. And I've got a one and a half ohm capacitor. I'm perfectly fine with that. Just for the heck of it, let's do an ohmmeter test on it. So it should charge. And it did. It's continuing to charge and discharge. It's not shorted. Let's go the opposite direction. It's charging and discharging. The auto range feature on these meters makes it very hard to ohm a capacitor, especially if there's any other resistance around it. This has a 22K resistor to ground. Let's go ahead and check that just to make sure we're okay. So we'll use this pad and the output. And it reads exactly 22,000 ohms, 22 kilo ohms. That is absolutely perfect. I'm very happy with these results. I really think if we repair these toasted circuit traces right here, that we're going to be back in business. So let's go ahead and add some jumpers. So I have some light hookup wire. I'm just going to cut it and solder it on this pad right here. And we'll solder it back to this pad right here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and trim away this burnt part. There we go. So I got my 862D plus warmed up to 785 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's go ahead and pretend the lead right here. Next, I'm just going to apply a little dab of solder on the ground lead and on the other ground lead. Now we'll go ahead and attach the one end. There we go. Now we have a nice lead tacked between. And now I don't have to worry about this portion right here because it doesn't actually connect to anything else. So I'm just going to leave that as is. So now because this was compromised as well, let's go ahead and cut that out of the way. And we'll add a lead from here over to here. So I've got my lead made up. We'll go ahead and tin both ends. Add fresh solder to both ends. There it is, tacked in place. I think we should be good. Now we'll go ahead and reassemble the unit and find out if we have ohmage from ground to ground. So now I'm just going to go ahead and do ohms. I have the board temporarily just plugged back in here. 
So let's see if we have ohms from, this is the subwoofer output, the black lead right here. So if we, see if we have ohms from here to one of the other connectors on the board. Zero. That's good. Very happy. Let's put it all back together now. All right, got all the screws back in it now. Everything's connected. I think we're ready to give this baby a try. So I'm gonna advise my customer that they need to bring their subwoofer in and have it checked out. Because I believe there's a ground fault in the subwoofer that burned up these traces. All right, there it is working. I've got the right left speakers connected as well as the subwoofer. So if I turn off the right left speakers, you can hear the subwoofer running, just the subwoofer only. So let me turn the right left speakers back on briefly and turn off the subwoofer. You can certainly hear a difference in that. So there's just the subwoofer running again. If you enjoyed this video, please consider making a donation on my YouTube homepage with the PayPal donate button or at paypal.me slash norcal715. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and ring that bell. Remember, with your help, we can keep these things out of the landfill and out of the recycle bin. Everybody have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.